Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a cloud advocate working at Microsoft. And this short video, I'm going to show you how you can onboard your servers running in a hybrid environment to Azure Arc so you can manage them from the cloud, from the Azure portal using Azure Resource Manager. So stay tuned. So again, in this session, I really want to go and see how we can actually manage and uh, govern servers across any infrastructure with Azure Arc. Now first, let's have a look why we actually need a tool like Azure Arc and, and why it's so important. So as you can imagine, um, our environments and our customers' environments get increasingly complex, right? So we manage thousands of apps and these can be cloud native apps they can be very modern apps running in the cloud but this can be also legacy apps which we have for years which were developed 10 years ago or even older uh, which run in virtual machines across every environment so we have this huge complexity uh, in terms of what we have on apps but then we also have that high diversity of infrastructure right Today, we probably have our own data centers. Uh, we have maybe outsourced a couple of virtual machines or servers to hosters. We are running some workloads at branch offices. We have different OEM environments. We probably have IoT devices. We have the edge. We are working with other cloud providers. So we have this huge diversity where our servers are running. And then last but not least, again, we have other cloud providers as well. This can, can be that actually the company strategy could be, let's go with Azure, but uh, one of the departments already started with another cloud provider and we wanna offer to basically help them uh, manage these servers. And we need to ensure that they're also compliant. We need to make sure that they're up to date, uh, even though they run on, completely different, on a completely different cloud provider. Now, for that, we have Azure Arc. And Azure Arc is a couple of different things. It's not just server management, which we're going to talk about uh, in this session, but um, Azure Arc brings basically Azure services and management capabilities to any infrastructure. So it allows us, for example, to run Azure data services wherever we need them. We can install them on-prem, we can install them on other cloud provider. Uh, but then also extending the Azure management across all these environments. Today, the Azure management was limited basically um, to Azure and Azure Stack. But now let's just use the same cloud native management capabilities and bring those um, management capabilities to on-prem servers and other, serv other locations as well. And with that, that enables us also to adopt these cloud practices we implemented from Azure uh, and use them on-prem as well, as when as well as implementing our Azure security services anywhere. So with that, Azure Arc really is a set of technology that extends Azure management, enables Azure services to run across on-premises, multi-cloud, and the edge. Now let's talk about servers. Again. Uh, I already mentioned that when we run servers, we have servers everywhere, right? Uh, again, mention a normal sized company where they have different locations. They need to run a couple of servers. This can be Linux servers, Windows servers. Um, they probably need some file servers on every location. They only have maybe have print servers, uh, some specific application servers. Some of their workloads may be already moved to the cloud. Some others they need to stay on prem. Uh, some other uh, departments are using other cloud providers. And so it again, it gets increasingly complex to manage all that. Now, we heard a lot of customer pain points here. Um, so they have like pain to make sure that all their servers running in this different infrastructure have the same policy and are configured the right way. They have too much different infrastructure around um, and there are too many places to look at. There's no central place where they can actually see all their systems. Sometimes they use management tools uh, for their servers on-prem. Sometimes they use others for the cloud and then uh, they have some inventory tools which they somehow bring together but then they have this edge location where they actually do not have a connection to um, so they don't get them into their system or CMDB uh, they can't really see all 
um, the service at one single point of time. And then even making sure that they're all compliant with the company policies becomes even more complex and more difficult. Now, so wouldn't it be great if we could use the Azure management capabilities um, on resources outside of Azure, right? So we have solved uh, many of these challenges um, that we manage a lot of resources, uh, that we have a lot of complexity. Um, we solve this in Azure using the Azure management tools uh, to basically get like tags and policies um, and subscription management to make sure that we see all the servers in the right location and that we can actually go out and govern these servers and make sure they're compliant with our policies. So why not take that technology and those capabilities um, to our servers which are not running um, on-prem, uh, which are not running in Azure. So for that, um, we want to make sure that cloud admins um, can see servers across Azure, on-premises, and other cloud providers that they are compliant and configured and managed in a single pane of glass. So how do we do that? And for that, we have a little demo here, which I want to show you, where we're actually going to see the world of a cloud admin, which basically needs this overview of all the resources um, which we have. And he wants to be basically able to also then bring down policies to all this, this infrastructure and see all the resources it doesn't matter where they're running and see if they're compliant with our policies. So that's what we're going to show. So here we are in the Azure portal, right? And as you can see here, I'm in the all resources page, so I can see all my Azure resources. So wouldn't it be great if I could also see my on-prem servers or servers running in any other infrastructure? Uh, and I will show you that we can actually do that. So first of all, Let's just limit the view a little bit by type and say, okay, I only want to see virtual machines in Azure and machines running on-prem, which are basically ARC machines. And as you can see now, I can see my Azure virtual machines here, as well as my on-prem virtual machines, which have on uh, onboarded. Some of them are running in other cloud providers. Some of them are, for example, running in my, my local data centers and some of them in Azure. Now, make it easier, let's group them by type so we can actually split them up a little bit so we can see what is Azure Arc um, and what is like Azure Virtual Machines. And we can also go and filter. So we already use tags um, for cost centers here. So let's say, okay, I wanna show all my machines here in, from cost center 1001. You can see here, I can now see my on-prem virtual machine which belongs to that cost center, but also my Azure virtual machine, which belongs to the same cost center in a single view. And this makes it super easy to get an overview about what's going on. Now, this not only shows up in the Azure portal, this we can also use Azure Resource Graph for this. So here I have a query. This lists basically all my Azure Arc or hybrid compute resources. Um, and then I can also go and say, okay, not just my Azure compute resources, uh, Azure, but also uh, my hybrid resources as well. So I get all lists, all of these. And now let's make this a little bit more management friendly. Um, so I wanna show them and count them basically. So I can see here all my resources. And again, to make that more management friendly, let's go and create a chart and go a donut chart. And now I have this nice graph, uh, which I basically can uh, use and show to people, okay, where do we actually have, how many on-prem machines do we have versus cloud machines in that single view. But we don't stop there. I mean, this is great to get an overview, but we also want to probably check how does it work with compliance. And so we have Azure policies to manage our Azure resources. Uh, however, we can also use them now for our on-prem servers onboarded by Azure Arc as well. Here again, we have an overview about all our policies in the in cloud environment. And if I go to assignments, I could go and basically search for some of the policies here. Um, I can then go and do an assignment and I can define a scope. So I can go and start with a management group and I can even assign it if I want to to a subscription or even just to a resource group. 
and I can then select like a definition, which is basically a set of policies. And we have here, for example, if you look at uh, password, for example, there is one to audit VMs for an insecure for insecure password settings. So I already created that, so we're not gonna gonna do that. So we're gonna cancel this here. But now I wanna have a view on this. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the overview here. You can see here, um, like all my resources with a little bit of a nicer graph in a couple of days, I can see all the assignments. And then I also have an appliance view, uh, compliance view where I can actually see which policies and which um, initiatives are basically uh, compliant. So let's click on one here. And this one basically add audits Windows VMs that are not set to a specific time zone. So I said that they should be in Western Europe. And now I can see, okay, I'm not compliant, but which resources are these actually? So I can see here, some of my on-prem servers do not have to write, but also some of my Azure servers. So I can see them in a single view and can see, okay, what is actually not compliant. Doesn't matter where it runs. I can see all my servers here and I can see them that which are not compliant. And now as a cloud admin, I can basically go out and reach out to the specific owner of that machine and tell them, look, something is not good. Um, you need to fix this. I will show you in a bit how also the owner of that machine can actually use the Azure portal um, and the Azure management tools to see, okay, where I'm not compliant. Why is my server not compliant? How do I fix it? Um, that's the other part, which I'm going to show you in a bit. So how do we do that? So again, we have this Azure management uh, for our Azure resources, right? So we start from left to the right. We have our we are Azure customers and we can use the portal. We can use the shell. We can use bash CLI. You can also see that we use um, Azure resource graph to basically browse our resources. And this all is enabled by the Azure resource manager itself. It gives us a ton of capabilities. Uh, think about access and security like RBAC, logs, um, subscription management, but then also governance and compliance with logs and policies and blueprints uh, and obviously a lot of more which you can see here on that slide and today we just use them for our Azure resources right again this can be virtual machines but also past services serverless uh, containers uh, we can really govern like basically all the Azure resources in there now to make that work with other resources, we have Azure Arc. And Azure Arc basically allows us today to onboard servers, Kubernetes clusters, um, as well as the Azure data services. That said, um, computers, uh, servers today are in public preview while you can sign up for Kubernetes and data services right now. You can also see on that slide here that we don't just want to replace everything, right? You can still use your local tools. You're not depending on Azure um, in terms of management, but you get those local native tools to manage your service and services like Kubernetes and, and for example, like your data services with Azure Data Studio um, from your local environment as well. So the next thing I want to talk about is how can actually um, how can a server or an application admin see if his servers are compliant with the company policies, right? We just saw the view of our cloud admin, which basically got a view of all the resources running in the cloud. Uh, you can see, okay, all the resources which are not compliant, which are compliant. Um, so, but now think about it. I'm a application owner. I have a couple of servers, some of them running in Azure, some of them probably running on-prem. Um, how do I get a view and how can I see actually what is configured the right way, what is not? So for that, we have another demo, uh, which I wanna quickly show you. So here we are back in the Azure portal. And if I wanna get started, I can just go simply and go to Azure Arc here. And what you can see, you can see all these three options we have today. Um, so you can sign up for the pre uh, preview for Kubernetes and data services. But for us, we just use now managed servers. So here you get all this list of all the servers you can see, uh, which are onboarded using Azure Arc. You can see they are connected. If we have a look here at server two, for example, 
um, you can see here it looks like Azure management, right? That's what you can immediately see. You have some status here, you have an activity log, you get access control, um, and you also have, for example, tags here. So I can see the server does not have a tag, so I can simply go in and say, okay, I want to tag the location. This server here runs on my Surface Pro, so I'm going to tag this as, as a Surface Pro. Obviously, in more of your cases, it would be more or less a data center, right? But in that case, I can just tag the location. The other thing I want to show you is policies. Now, I showed you the policy view, which you can centralize, manage all that machines. Now, in this case, I only see this machine, but I can see here all the policies which are assigned to it. So I can see here all the compliant ones. I can see this one is not compliant. I'll drive in here and you can see here, this is a policy for auditing uh, VMs with insecure password settings. Now, basically it's an initiative which is multiple policies, but I'm not going deep into that. And you can see here, I'm compliant, I'm not compliant with a couple of these uh, policies here. Let's have a look at one. So one of these is, for example, show audit results from VMs that allow reuse of previous 24 passwords. And so I see my server is not compliant. I can get some more information here if I need to. And basically have a look at it um, to be sure, okay, what do I actually need to do? Which policy is it um, uh, where I need to comply? So if I go back to my server here, another thing I can do is I get access to my logs. So my server, if it's connected to an Azure Log Analytics workspace, I would only see I would only see the logs if I would have access to the Azure Log Analytics workspace. Now here, I can see only my context. So I can only see my server two here. I don't have access to the whole Log Analytics workspace. I only have access to my specific resources. And I can now run queries here as I could do in Log Analytics. And for that, for example, here I can see the update query. So we can see all the updates basically installed uh, on that specific uh, server here. And I get all that information. This comes very handy if it's especially a remote server where you probably don't have even access to log in, right? Where you probably need to create a VPN connection or something in a branch office where it's not connected to the main location. Um, you would need to go out and somehow difficultly log in. And if you need to do that for like five, six, seven, ten different locations, um, this is very difficult. In that, in that case, you just go go to the Azure resource. Doesn't matter where it runs. Um, doesn't matter how you get access to it. Since it's configured the right way, you can have a look at this specific server. So this was the server admin demo. And again, um, this is enabled. All this is enabled by the Azure Arc um, for service agent. And you can see here that we have this Azure Connect machine agent, which basically enables this scenario. Um, it's a very clever way. Um, for example, we have this VM extensions, uh, as you can, as you know, from the Azure resources, from Azure machines, which then speak to Azure Resource Manager and vice versa. And with the Azure Connect machine agent, we can basically do that too for machines which are running on any infrastructure outside of Azure. The only thing which obviously needs to be enabled is that your server needs to somehow be uh, available to talk to the Azure APIs. Um, there's documentation, but basically it's just outbound port 443, uh, which is HTTPS connection, which basically then sends data to Azure. Again, this is only what you configure. If you don't want to have the logs going there, if you don't configure logs, that's fine. But at least you get a governance uh, policy view and tagging options uh, in Azure as well. So how can we actually onboard servers to Azure Arc, right? Um, you, you saw now the capabilities of our Azure Arc for servers scenario. So how do I add servers? And for that, I want to show you another demo how that actually works. Here I'm again back in the Azure portal. I'm already opened up the Arc machines. And the only thing I will need to do here is to click on add servers. This will open up a wizard. And I have two options here. I can use um, like to onboard a single machine or a couple of like just a low number of virtual machine by interactive script, but I can also go and onboard at scale, basically using a service principle um, to do that. But for our scenario, we are going with the interactive experience where we need to log in. So now we're going into that wizard and we need to select a subscription 
we need to go and select the resource group as we do for any elder azure resource as well we're going to select the region where our server is connected to and since we are in public preview um, we have those three regions available we can also say okay this is a windows or linux machine i want to onboard in this case we have a windows machine and then I can go and configure a proxy. If the machine is behind a proxy, I can also do that. And this will help us generate that script. On the next page, I could already go and add some tags if I need to. Um, and you can see here the location, the cost center tag I have here. Uh, in our case, we will do that later. And then on the summary page, I basically get to download the script or I can just copy the script here. And what it does, it basically downloads the agent it installs the agent and then runs a command to connect to that subscription where I then need to log in with enough permissions uh, to basically do that. That's why we use the service principle uh, when we would do a um, onboarding of multiple machines. We can also do that and onboard machines using Windows Admin Center. So I'm here in Windows Admin Center, I'm managing all my servers from here. So if I go, you can see here all the information if you haven't had a look at Windows Admin, you should do that. Go to settings of that specific server. And you can see here, I have Azure Arc for servers. And then I have a get started button. I can then, as I did for the script generator, I can go and select the subscription I want to connect to. I can select the resource group or create a new one if I need to. And then select the right Azure region. Again, in our case, West Europe. If I need a proxy, I can select that here. And then I just click on setup. And this will now go download the agent, install the agent, and then register um, this specific server to the Azure portal. And you can see here, now it's done. It takes a couple of minutes to complete usually. And then you have all the information here. You can go and directly go to guest configuration policies. If I go back to the portal, you can see here that I have my server to here now connected um, to the specific uh, Azure subscription. So super easy to onboard. Again, we can generate the script, which helps us uh, basically download the agent, install that, and then basically run the command uh, to connect that server to the right subscription and the right resource group. So if we go back, here are some key takeaways for Azure Arc for servers and what, what it can actually do today. So today uh, we can use Azure Arc for servers for inventory, right? We can see all our Windows and Linux servers. We can see if they're, if they're physical or virtual machines. We can see if they run in a private data center or in a hosted cloud. And this is completely domain agnostic, right? If you have, if you work in one of these enterprises with multiple domains and forests, and some of them are not trusted, some of them you don't have enough access. However, if you onboard these, these servers, um, Azure Arc doesn't care about these different domains. Uh, by itself. Uh, obviously, you can use tags and other things to make that happen or resource groups if you want to um, to organize it that way. You get governance and security. Again, you get this built-in policy capabilities you know from Azure and you can also use them for Azure Arc servers. Um, there is a, we have some security baseline policies which you have templates which you just can use and make sure that all your resources, doesn't matter where they run, uh, are compliant. We give you role-based access. So obviously you have central IT, which can have like operations uh, to central operations, but then we can also just enable uh, access to certain Azure Arc machines in the Azure portal. So if you, for example, the application owner of the SharePoint environment, and you need to manage only SharePoint servers and what belongs to that, um, you can now just, we can now limit that access for you just for these machines um, as well. And again, this gives you then access to a, 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 a central basic lock space, but you only have the resources for, for, or you have only access to the resources you actually should have, right? You don't have access to any other locks from other machines as well. And then it integrates into a Azure Lighthouse, uh, which is an interesting way for uh, managed service providers as well. And in the last one, I want to mention uh, one central place to manage at scale. So you have basically a really great searchable inventory where you can use tags to organize your resources. 
and you get a consistent experience through the portal, but also you can also use uh, PowerShell, the CLI and other tools to basically re list those resources and manage those resources. Okay, so here again, to close that off, uh, you can see here an overview about Azure Arc and what it actually means. You get this management experience. Again, I showed you a couple. This can be the Azure Portal, Azure CLI, PowerShell, the Azure SDK, which then talks to Azure and the Azure Resource Manager, which provides you with RBAC policies, tags, groups, and all that. And before, obviously, we could like just connect to Azure res um, to to uh, resources running in Azure, but with Azure Arc, we can enable that. So we have, for example, connection to Azure Data Services, um, which we have, like, which was will come out in private preview in a bit, in re relatively soon. And then we have Kubernetes management, and I just showed you the server management or the Azure Arc server resource provider, uh, which basically allows you to manage Linux and Windows servers. Again, that said, there are still specific tools to manage these on-prem resources. So if you need to have on-prem access or you need a specific task, um, Azure Arc is not just to go there to just replace or it's more or less a complementary way right now um, what you can do. So in terms of service, you can still combine it with Windows Admin Center as well. But um, to get that whole overview about all the resources running in Azure, um, you can basically do that um, using uh, Azure Arc for servers. So, and it all comes down then to basically bring all these capabilities we have um, in terms of speed and control for cloud native governance, but to also bring that down to your on-prem environment. Um, again, we can organize our services by subscription management groups, we can assign policies um, and configure that. And this really comes down to bring that to all your resources, not just to the ones running in Azure. So if you want to learn more, I highly recommend that you check out this blog post here. I did a short summary. I was very early involved in the Azure Arc uh, for servers part. So I had like very early access to basically test and try out Azure Arc and find some more information on it. Um, this blog post really goes into more deep information uh, about what we are doing and how you actually onboard service and how you can try it out. Uh, it's very simple, by the way. If you try want to try it out, just go to the Azure portal, Azure Arc. You saw how to onboard the server. If you don't want to use it anymore, just uninstall that agent on that server uh, and you basically remove that server um, from Azure Arc management. And then I'm super happy if you also follow our IT Ops or AC Ops team on itopstalk.com. This is our team's blog where we actually blog about hybrid technologies, Azure, but also Windows Server, PowerShell, Active Directory, and a lot of other stuff as well, um, where we talk a little really about what does IT Ops need to do in a cloud and on-prem on the hybrid world uh, as well. I'm also super happy if you follow me on Twitter, uh, where I usually tweet about the latest and greatest um, we have in our data, uh, in our Azure data centers and what we're actually gonna offer there as well.